was, how did you get into golf? when you first started? Well, I was a amateur golfer. I mean, I just played golf for fun. Um, I did other sports when I was younger, and they, I played ice hockey, and that started to be a little painful around 30, so I kind of slid out of ice hockey and, and started playing more golf, which was easier on the body. Yeah. Um, but never played professional golf, just played for fun, just really enjoyed the game. Um, did it part-time because I was working full-time. I was a, uh, worked in finance, and I worked at a, a high-tech company and did a lot of software development and database development, and it was just, uh, I just loved the game of golf. What was it that, that you loved? What, what made you like tick? I, I think the, a couple things, I love being outside and playing the game, but it's, it's the kind of game that's so hard to get really good at. Yeah. You, know, you can always continue to improve at golf. You never, you never f- figured out golf completely. Yeah. You know, it's an ender, never ending process of trying to get better. And, and then did you move into coaching naturally or was it something? No, I, I never intended to be a coach. I started right. off creating the software for Aimpoint that we saw on TV. So mm. uh, I created a software package that predicted how the ball would break yeah. and used it on Golf Channel for about six years. And slowly during that time, I started learning a lot about green reading and break that I then slowly started to be a coach and coaching some students. Um, and then at some point it was it used to be all TV and technology and no coaching, and then mm. it became all coaching and no technology at yeah. the end. So I'm at a point now where uh, I coach almost 100% of the time, and um, the software I developed years ago, I haven't even touched it in oh, wow. six years or something. So, and when you coach, is it um, is it mainly aim point, or do you still, if if a client comes to you, is it still a, f- a full full game improvement? No, not full game. I only teach oh. putting. I only teach aim point and speed and aim. Right. So it's just exclusively putting. Right. Uh, can you help us understand what is Aimpoint and, and ha- what does it do for a golfer? Well, what Aimpoint does for a golfer, uh, which very few things in golf do, does, is it allows you to immediately learn how to read break. So the, the basic Aimpoint that we've done for about 10 years now, it t- you can take any golfer with no experience whatsoever and after one or two hour lesson, understand how to read break like a, a very experienced golfer. So it's teaching you what's causing break and how to very simply get an accurate break. I've taught people who have never played golf in their life, and after 30 minutes they get the exact same reads I do. And I've been teaching this for 10, 10 years or so. Right. So uh, no real, uh, in terms of putting, putting technique, that there's not, not a level required? No, no. Oh. You, I mean, you can learn how to read a green no matter what your level is. I mean, yeah. I've taught it to seven-year-olds. I've taught it to people who have never played golf, high handicaps, all the way up to um, three number one in the world players. So being able to read a green is not dependent whatsoever on your golfing ability or your technique. Right. But it's still then the ability to, to read the greens better in, has the ability to improve your putting. So, yes. Yeah. Yes. If you understand your your target better, then your speed will get better, and typically people's technique actually starts to get better. So I right. teach some technique. I teach speed control, but everything starts with with aim. Everything starts with what's the read. How much should a ball break for any putt whatsoever? Mm. And once you understand that, which is actually fairly straightforward, then the rest can layer on top of that, and you can become much better at the other pieces. So so it starts with the aim. Um, is it true? I mean, Aimpoint is is. Would you say it's scientific? Uh, the underlying piece is very, very scientific. So yeah. my software is about a hundred thousand lines of code that will predict how a ball breaks under any conditions. Right. And that's that's the software we use to validate that the Aimpoint read works. So when you see people holding their fingers up, and they're seeing a certain amount of break, that actually very closely matches what the computer program will tell you. So that's how we know it works. So it is scientifically based, yet... Very much so, yes. When you use it, and you have to help me out of here, yeah. you actually start with what you feel. Yeah, it's all feel. So, it is all So feel. it's just a one... All you have to do for an aim point read is just feel how much slope on a scale of usually one to four. So right. we're just feeling how much slope, and then if you hold up your fingers, it actually scientifically matches the correct break. So the mathematically correct break you'll actually see with your fingers and the better you are at feeling slope, the, the more accurate that read is. And so you start feeling the slope with your feet, and if I got it right, you uh, or we as humans are actually better equipped to feel the slope with our feet than we are to see it with our eyes. Much better, much, much better. better. Because, How so? That- well, because our eyes can, are, you, vision is um, interpretive. You're interpreting what you see, and mm. different people see the same thing in different ways. So. We might look at a slope and I might see it left and you might see it straight and somebody else might see it a little bit right. That's why we get the direction of putts Mm. wrong. 
but our feel is all very accurate because we learn when we're very young to balance ourselves, otherwise we'd fall over. Right. And so the fact that we can all walk around without falling over means that we have a very well-developed well sense of balance and feel. And so we use that to read greens rather than trying to look at it. So in, uh, if somebody wants to, and, and I have to get back when you start talking about fingers. So mm -hmm. when we see a lot of the tour players, they're not actually counting they're not learning to count their fingers. No, they're, no, no. They're doing something else. They're getting a visual. Um, they're visually seeing how much the ball moves. Right. So they're feeling a slope. If they feel a, a two slope, they hold up two fingers, and it's actually showing them where to start their ball. It's showing how much the ball is going to move sideways or break uh, during that particular putt. Uh, we talked about tour players. Mm -hmm. Are you currently working with any Swedish tour players? Um, Swedish tour players. Uh, I've worked with uh, Danny Holmquist recently. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've worked with uh, Anna Nordquist several yes. times. That's good. Yeah. So good you um, help about 250 uh, of the world's best coaches this week yes. To, yes. to get certified with Aimpoint. Uh, well, they're already certified, and so what we do is uh, development. So part right. of my program is we continue to educate and develop coaches over over the t over time, so they get become better and better coaches. And so to get into your program and start using Aimpoint as a coach, mm -hmm. do you need a certain qualification? Well, there's some basic, there's some minimum qualifications. So you have to be a coach for at least three years. Um, you have to be a full-time golf coach. Right. Um, so that we, we only accept people who are very committed to being golf coaches full-time and have some basic level of experience before they start. And if we uh, then move away slightly from Aimpoint and, and looking at you as a, uh, obviously, a really uh, well-respected figure in the golf world. Uh, how do you see uh, the golf industry? There's a lot of talk about how can we get more young people involved and how can we mm -hmm. make golf more accessible. From your um, position, what, what, what are your thoughts on that? Well, my thoughts, for especially for young people and a lot of amateurs, is, and this was my experience growing up, I was an amateur golfer, I took lots of lessons, and I never really got much better. And I think that the higher quality our instruction is to begin with, the more people will stay with it. Mm. Uh, a lot of friends who get frustrated with golf and just quit because they, they can't get better to a reasonable level without a lot of work. Um, we also need to make the game faster, especially for, for kids. Mm. Uh, if they want to play, they've got to be able to go out and play an hour and a half or two hours. We can't be taking young children out and, and having them play for three or four hours. It's just too long. It's too long for yeah. anybody. Yeah. Um, so, so better instruction, um, getting them out there quicker, and more team environments, I think, for the children, because a lot of the kids don't want to play because it's perceived as a very individual sport versus a lot of the team sports they play. Mm. So I think that would uh, help a lot to generate interest. And uh, just finally, to, to leave um, our readers and our uh, viewers, how, uh, if, if there's a Swedish golfer and they really want to learn Aimpoint, what's the first step? Uh, well, the, the best way is to go on the website and find a local instructor. So if you're yep. in Stockholm, Daniel Bach is there. Yep. Um, you want to learn from a, a certified instructor because they know precisely the right way to learn it the first time. Mm. And the first time you learn it, you want to make sure the pieces are correct. It's very, very simple if you learn it correctly. Mm. Uh, I've, learned, I've heard of people who learn from other friends or relatives or other instructors, and they never quite get it right. And so... If you learn it, just go take an hour, two hour lesson is all you need to really understand it, but make sure you learn it from a, a, a proper instructor. Sorry for the yeah. instructor. Awesome. Mark, okay. thank you so thank much you. for taking the time. No really problem. Really enjoyed thank it. You. Appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks.